Hello, welcome to this World Plum Day talk. I am Victor Fernando de Alba, I'm a member of the Plum community. I, I'm currently now the uh, Plum Volto release manager. And today I want to update you on a subject. I made this uh, talk back in the last Plum conference in Avar. And uh, this talk is uh, breaking boundaries blown as headless CMS. And we've been, the community has been working on this uh, headless CMS story during the last six months. And I want to uh, update you on uh, the latest developments there and also make a small summary. Uh, This Plone CMS today uh, is the architecture that we use. We currently have two references implementations. One is classic UI. It's uh, based on Python, both the backend and the UI. And we have Volto, which is the reference implementation in React.js. And currently is the default UI for Plone or the recommended UI for Plone. Um, We've been building uh, projects with Classic and Volto since, in Classic since more than 20 years ago, in Volto uh, since six, seven years ago. And uh, we followed the same approach and, uh, because both share the same monolithic approach. So we have uh, Plone Backend, which is where we store our content, our content types, our custom code, the custom content types. And we have then the default theme UI, uh, the CMS UI and the admin UI that Plum provides, both in Classic and Volto. And over this default UI, then you provide also your own custom UI, your own custom look and feel for every single project and client to give these personalized uh, look and feel to the sites or intranets, whatever you are building. <clears throat> In particular, Volto 18 also shared this architecture. And on the bottom, we have also how Volto is made. Is made, is made also as a monolith uh, using semantic UI, uh, Redux, React Router, and custom uh, server-side rendering. And these four main things that we said, the theme UI, the CMS UI, the admin UI, and the, personaliz the customized uh, customizations to every single project on that. Then uh, in the community, we had also this itch. And uh, we saw also in the uh, in industry uh, raise the raise of uh, the so-called headless CMSs. And nowadays they are very trendy and uh, a custom, so a headless CMS is basically a backend only application that provides API access to uh, its resources and the content management system feature set. Uh, normally they don't, do not have uh, UI, they don't, don't so they're their, normally their motto is you bring your own front end to us and we will take care of the rest. So we will save the data, save your content type, save your structure, but you have to bring your own UI. They do provide libraries uh, to work with the most uh, famous uh, frameworks uh, as could be Next.js or Remix or Angular or whatever you could imagine. Uh, some of them also provide an edit uh, interface, but it's also, I won't say limited, it's also very uh, uh, not, uh, not friendly, let's say. And they only provide the ability to create this content in a, in a very, very practical way. Um, some of them also encourage you to write your own editor that then you will use, your users will use to add this content. So they provide the means to build the model of your content, to edit it, to store it, to access and manage it. And they often come in a SaaS, SAS, SAS uh, solution. 
So the question that the community had the last uh, months is that will Plone qualify as a modern headless CMS? Uh, Plone CMS feature list is unmatched. Plone's REST API is outstanding. We had a very good grasp of what is a content type, how to edit it, how to extend it. We have a gazillion of uh, different fields, different widgets that you could add to your content type. You could even create and edit your content types dynamically. And of course, what Plone excelled always was the security, the workflows, and the permission model. And in summary, you, we have Plone have the results of more than two decades of experience. And this is very important. So, well, some time ago, the community did this exercise. So is we have all the feature set that goes into Volto. And the exercise consisted in what of these features that make Volto Volto we could extract and use it somewhere else, right? What makes them what are what of that that features are worth to extract it? put elsewhere and use it uh, outside Volto. Then we made this list, uh, but these are the core features of Volto. We have the Arons architecture uh, in Plone. We always had uh, this extensibility story that worked in the backend and in classic. And we port this uh, idea to Volto and we have that also in Volto and probably we are one of the uh, is a, our case is very unique where a framework uh, that works on uh, modern javascript have this extensibility story as we do i know no other framework that does that as we do that and uh, this is very important and it is key to plone and volto and we thought that it will very worth to extract it as well as the configuration component and slots registry, and the component shadowing. We have this ability to uh, modify a module, a part of the code, and to provide uh, yet another component that will overlay on the top of that component, and then this new component will, will take over. And we have this in the CCA architecture, in Zope, uh, in the backend, but we also supported this concept to Volt. And so we can modify modules on the fly uh, by using component shadowing. I only know to Gatsby was able to do that and had this concept, but no other uh, frameworks has it as far as I know and uses this technique. Uh, combined with the Adams architecture is a very powerful uh, pattern, right? Then we have the basic and structural CMS components. We have the theming, we have the data fetching, the routing, the server-side rendering, the seamless mode and internal proxy that this is how we deploy and develop uh, Volto and then the Pastanaga block editor, right? So we had this community feedback during the last years and people were questioning um, uh, about these things. The first one is, can I use the editor, the block editor outside Volto? The answer is, uh, well, kind of, we you could, but you had to do some adaptation. You will have to mock a number of things. Why does this happen? This happened because the monolithic approach that we took at the beginning, everything in Volto is intertwined, right? So the components have the meaning to access the data and they, have connect, they are connected to the Redux store, which in turn uses a middleware to make the request and do the data fetching. Then we have other concerns that are related to architecture. Then we have a lot of things intertwined that it makes Volto act as a block, as a, this monolith that it is. So if we want to reuse this in somewhere else, we will have to drag all these things over and uh, be, be, bear with it in whatever place that we put it. And that's why it's kind of difficult. So the answer is mm, kind of, it's complicated, it has drawbacks. 
Then uh, yet another question, another request is that can I use Volta components in my existing React app? Yes, you can, but given the fact also, again, that Volta is a monolith, you could uh, import it, but then this component will have the Redux store and the data fetching intertwined, and you will have either to have Redux also in your in your uh, application or mock it or fake it or make it uh, the uh, data fetch arrive to the component some, by some other mean. And again, you will have to drag all the other dependencies that this, this component have in Volto. And again, the answer is no, or well, it's complicated, yeah, kind of, or, we have this use case. Uh, back in the day, I paired with uh, Johannes Ragam because uh, the request was, can I use the, the contents view from Volto into uh, Classic UI? Classic UI already have a, uh, the contents view as a JavaScript extension. So the contents view is already JavaScript. So he was asking, okay, since it's already JavaScript, can I import from Volto and render the uh, contents component into Classic? And I paired with him, and as I said, it's kind of doable, but it's a nightmare. You have to replicate a lot of things, a lot of the structures into classic which is not thought of and then you have the bundle that explodes because of that and you have a lot of uh, a lot of drawbacks so we couldn't do that at the end we had a poc but it ended up by doing that by being that so it's a poc so yeah one of the use cases will be uh, to have uh, yeah uh, reusable components everywhere right it will be great so uh, the other other question: Can I use any other design system in my in Volto that is not Semantic UI? We had this request from, for example, the Red Turtle guys uh, who uh, are work, they work for the local Italian government, the local uh, uh, town uh, halls, and uh, they made their uh, websites, but. All the Italian town, uh, town halls have their own style guide, and they use, as far as I know, uh, React Bootstrap to, and they have a style guide and a design system. So they have to use this design system in, in and bring it to Plone. And the thing is that you cannot get rid completely of semantic UI in full, although Re uh, Red Turtle made a uh, a way of kind of doing it and remove all the public uh, rendering uh, of semantic UI. I only use it for the back end, but you, you, drag, you have to drag semantic UI along if you want to do that. And this is a drawback. Uh, and we want also can. So we compile a list of things that we can do. And uh, the first thing is that, uh, of the, on this to-do list is to break free from our current boundaries, which are these boundaries. I told you about them. So this is the architecture, the nowadays architecture of Volto. Sorry, of Clone. You choose either use Classic or Volto, the two reference implementations. And you are uh, constrained to that vertical, right? So that you use classic or vault and you have to bear with everything that it's behind, right? And I, uh, we, we had this idea that Plone should adapt to the project, not the other way around. So now that a client comes and asks for a project and uh, they have their own systems because yeah, we are in 2024 and uh, People have it, their own system, their own solutions. And when you have to sell Plone, you have to go, no, this is our monolith. It works like that. It has to somehow get in uh, your uh, architecture, your solutions map. And some, some, uh, sometimes it's difficult to do that. And they have to adapt the way of Plone does instead of the other way around. And I think that 
it will be great that instead of doing this, so the project and the client, is, so it's Plone the one that adapts to the client and the project instead of uh, the client being to adapt the way of doing things in Plone, right? So for overcoming this, we have uh, come with uh, these uh, Plone front-end strategic packages, what we call uh, them like this. So the core features that we saw before, we are mapping them to these Plone front-end strategic packages. And we are creating isolated packages that have these features. So we, this way, we can extract the features from Volto and use them elsewhere. The first one, and this is uh, one that is already working in, in Volto 18, in, which is in its alpha phase, and Volto 18 will be uh, uh, released in Plone 6.1, which will be released before summer, hopefully. And uh, this registry have the Adams architecture, the configuration, the component and slots registry, and the component shadowing. This is one of them. We have even more. We have uh, uh, the components. Is this uh, basic and structural CMS components and the theming alone? We want to extract them so we can reuse them elsewhere, right? <clears throat> Then the last one is the data fetching. So we want to not to be tight uh, and constrained that, uh, to, to the Redux store and the middleware that nowadays it's on Volto. We want a more agnostic way of doing it. We also, it's a requirement that this does not only work on React, but also works in an agnostic way in any framework or any platform. And that is very lightweight, and it's not that heavy as the current implementation in Volto. So, and these are the remaining core features, routing, server-side rendering, and the deployment. But this is provided normally, but nowadays frameworks, Next.js, Remix, uh, Angular, this is provided by them. So you don't have really to provide them. You just have to adapt to them. So let's take a closer look to, the, uh, to all the components. We have first the data fetching. Uh, we call this component, this package, at Plone client. As I said, it's, uh, it's released in alpha stage. We work on this in the last, we had a student uh, work, uh, that worked on a Google Summer of Code project on it. And we had the outcome was this package. We are polishing it. We are in the way to make it's completely agnostic. It's based on in, in TimeStack Query, which is a library, very successful library, very famous. It's agnostic. It provides not only data fetching. Well, it, in fact, it doesn't provide data fetching. It provides a layer for you have the means to have the data fetching and a full layer of fetching and uh, local storage for these queries. And uh, it is agnostic. It works. It can work in React, of course, in Angular, in Svelte, and I think that in Solid. I don't know. I will have. I don't know what's the status, but they they uh, claim to uh, work on all these, and it's made in, in TypeScript. Next one is the registries and Adams architecture. We call this package at Plone Registry. It is released in an stable version. It is used in Volto uh, 18, as I said. Uh, and it provides a way to extract this uh, add-on architecture and the registries outside Volto itself. So you can go anywhere in your any framework and use these features in there. Right? You could go to Next.js and add the component registry in there, or add this slots registry in there, or uh, create a store registry, any kind of registry and even create add-ons for Next.js, which is a long uh, wish that I had. So you not only have add-ons for Volta, but you have, can have add-ons also for other frameworks, for Remix, for Next.js, for other. And this package alone, and as I, uh, I used to say, this is the most underrated piece of software that the Plone community 
produced during the last years. But loan registry is amazing, and I hope that it's going to be amazing and will provide the foundations for making all these things a reality. And as I said, it's working in Volto today. Then we have at plum components, which is this set of uh, white level components. It is based in React area components, as I said. Is this Adobe uh, uh, accessible first uh, component library that you bring your own styling, right? And uh, it can be used today. It is released and it has an stable version, 1.x series, but we're working in a 2.x series, and which is currently in alpha. We are polishing it. We have another talk from the Warplon Day uh, talking about plum components. You can check, the, check it out. It's very interesting. And the most important feature is that you can use it today, not only in Volto, but also in any other uh, project uh, React project that uh, you could have out there. It's TypeScript, and yeah, we're working on that. Then very tight integrated is the theming. We're working on, on the theming for the Plum components, and uh, the idea, the philosophy that we are uh, adding in there is that Plum components should have a very thin layer of uh, simple vanilla CSS that for every component, it only takes a bunch of lines of CSS. And it's not using any preprocessor. It's not, it's not using any fancy pants uh, CSS framework. Uh, it's only vanilla CSS with uh, CSS custom properties to help to customize these small things and to bring your own uh, look and feel to the components in a very easy way. It's so easy that you can use this uh, thin layer that I am talking about, or you can build upon, or if you want, you can remove completely, bring your own styling on the top of that. Uh, it already features the layout that we are using in Kit Concept Volto Live theme, uh, and the containers that are with, uh, with uh, uh, CSS container queries. And yeah, it's a POC right now. It's in the early stages. It's it's matched with the uh, with the alpha stage that I uh, that I talked about. Now we are experimenting on it. Uh, the feedback so far is good, so we will continue working on that. And these clone components. So the, this is part of the clone headless CMS plan. And what is as I said, number one. We uh, build these components. Some of them are uh, a reality, like Plum Registry, Plum Client, Plum Components are in experimental phase and in alpha stages. And we have yet another one that we didn't talk about it, uh, the, which is Plum Types. The four of them are what we call the Plum Front and Strategic uh, Packages. Plone types, and is the one that we haven't talked about yet, is the one that uh, aims to have all the types of definitions that Plone have on itself. So we, if we are writing TypeScript, we can use the types in there to uh, code and to build your add-ons and Bolto itself uh, using these types. These core components, they cannot rely on anything else. They can have any dependency on other Adplon uh, packages because of the philosophy that I talked uh, at the beginning. So they should be uh, isolated. They can be used in isolation, and they should do exactly what they were think about and anything else. So to prevent precisely what I talked at the beginning. So we have this monolith of Volta and we have, want to use 1% of it. I don't have to bear with every uh, all Volta. We only chirurgically grabbing exactly what we want and using it if, if, we, if we want. Then we have this 1.5. Uh, step or stage where we have other blown front end strategic uh, packages, which we have divided 
for now in utilities, we have loan providers, which will, provi will provide yeah, uh, React providers that we will use in more complex components. So they will uh, provide the dependency injection that things that we need for the other uh, packages to work well. Uh, then we have clone helpers. It turns out that in Volta we have a gazillion of helpers that does very small things, very specific uh, uh, methods that do specific utilities uh, and, and accomplish uh, specific uh, tasks that are very interesting and they can be used outside, not only in Volto. So the idea is to have this package that uh, uh, have all of them, trans, uh, uh, refactor them into TypeScript so they are also uh, nicer for develop with and, and so on and so forth. Then we have this is more these two special uh, other packages which are clone drivers and clone RSCs. You know that I told you that clone components is the, the the components are meant not to provide their own data fetching, but the data from above from props. We will need this breed of components that provide the data to the components below, and this is what we call drivers. And we can have two types of drivers depending on the technology. You know that the React, um, the React community is working right now in this uh, new uh, concept, which everybody's talking about today, which are React server components. Next.js is using them already. Remix will adopt them soon and other frameworks as well. So is this React component that only works in the server uh, as opposed to the ones that work in the client. So these uh, server components provide uh, the data fetching that is only happening in the server, and then they provide the serialized data through the wire to the client components in a very, very summarized idea. So we will have to adapt when they are uh, mainstream, and I can imagine to have these clone drivers, the uh, that will provide data to the underneath components in a traditional way, but also these React Server Components library that we will have in here. Then, in addition, we have these two other packages that will provide the blocks implementation and the slots implementation using plum components again, but in a, they uh, will hold these components that will be more complex, like the header, the, the header, the footer, uh, the breadcrumbs, the, uh, I don't know, uh, the sections, uh, the logo, these more elaborated components that will use clone components to uh, build themselves, but they are more complex and they provide more functionality and potentially will have slots on themselves. So they will be able to be extensible and not be that basic, right? To finish, we will have also feature packages. For example, the add plum content is the maximum exponent on, on that. Uh, this Back to this contents view. W wouldn't be nice to have the contents view also isolated in its own package. Of course, using some other core packages like plum client, plum components, maybe plum registry. Right, but that it's isolated in its own way, so I can use it when wherever I want. For example, I can put it on my Next.js app, on my Remix app, on my desktop Electron-based uh, application, or even in mobile. So I have uh, Ionic, and I drop it into Ionic, and using the same code, the same base code, I can. Uh, make it work in these different, so different environments, right? Uh, yeah, we've been looking for that a lot, and I am very looking forward to see it working. There is already a POC that Piero from Red Turtle did uh, recently, and it's the embryo of it. So, uh, yeah, I, we will continue certainly working on that uh, to make this happen. Uh, yeah, and one of the things that I don't forget, so these are, will also be able to have clone contents, this component in classic, of course, because you have 
mockup in there, mockup can use it as a, a dependency and load the contents view in classic as well. Wouldn't be nice. So second of the list, embrace blown as headless CMS. This will allow us only not to think that we build sites with it, but uh, of the traditional sites, traditional inter intranets, what we have in mind when we uh, have blown as a solution, but also more uh, specialized things. For example, what about uh, making a front end in Next.js that uh, uh, manage our personal image of video libraries, right? or our personal uh, blog uh, pages, or a training site where I have a simple content type that is a lesson. This lesson has a video and a metadata, and it has a transcript, and this is uh, what you show, and then the next button, right? And, and a front end that only does that, and only provides that. It's very quick. It, the PSI for that is, uh, is outstanding. Why not, right? So we can have all these other use cases that that um, that it will be maybe easier to uh, due to its simplicity, right? And uh, not having to deal with the whole vault or the whole UI, the whole configuration, the, the whole admin UI, or the whole classic, because we only need three views, right? Wouldn't be great also to be able to tailor my front end only to do that. And then I will fill it with the means that, that whatever, right? So the plan offering in late 2024, we had 2023 here, what we saw, and 2024, we have these uh, plan uh, front end strategic packages, uh, the core packages, the extended ones, that could be used in Classic, in Volto, and in Next.js, in Remix, in Vit, and whatever we have in mind that could be. Then this will be a quick uh, look at what the stack will look like. Uh, on the top, we will have the extended clone packages, then the core ones, then, then they will attack clone CMS backend. It will be Volto, it will be Next.js, it will be name your framework there. And lastly, the uh, cherry on the top will be to work on the CMS UI for that. So be able to escape Volta or Classic to edit our content, right? So we will have what we said, plus the, uh, this ad clone editor that will work on any framework. Ideally, we can have, of course, have to work on the React one or in the Angular one or have a reference implementation then uh, pave the way to have other implementations on that. That both will attack clone CMS the backend. So we have this strategic roadmap. We are working on the clone client version two in clone components in polishing the 2.x series. We will work until the end of the year also in the theming story, in the POCs, Something that I didn't mention, we have uh, POCs, a proof of concept of uh, Volto in Next.js, Volto in Remix, and Volto in a Vite uh, server-side rendered uh, build using TimeStack router, TimeStack uh, um, query, because we're using from client. And we want to uh, build that up, so we, the public, the public uh, rendering is kind of the same as Volto, right? Polish the extended plunk uh, packages. And finally, the cherry on the top, we start working in this detach editor that works uh, outside Volto and that provides the same feature set to edit content types, to edit the blocks. And uh, yeah, probably will start uh, by the end of the year, more or less. Then the last thing will be put it all together, right? So the last thing is not, not uh, keeping all these things, all these pieces that we will have on the table outside Volto, but to refactor Volto to include them all and have them included in Volto so we can 
wheel bolt again on the top of them on the core component, uh, four core packages, standard packages in the clone editor. And we'll have Volto, I don't know, Volto 20, we'll see that we will, it, it will feature all of them. So thanks a lot. Thanks for uh, watching this uh, World Point Day talk and uh, see you soon. I'm dying, man. <laughs>